if you have said to yourself, I should write that, or if someone has said to you, you should write that, then I'm talking to you because you need to write. And that's why you're tuned in to Why Write. Hi, welcome to Why Write. I'm your host, Angela Grout. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of Why Write, where we, where we learn why writers are writing and why you should be writing too. A lot of the guests on the show share not only the why they write, but the how they write and the meanings behind the stories that they tell. And for people tuning into the show, we all have a story inside of us to share. So I hope that every episode that you watch of Why Write helps you to find tools to share your story because all of our stories are worth sharing, whether it's through a prose, a verbal story, um, even a recipe, and maybe even some poetry. So mm -hmm. today, I actually have um, a writer and a poet on the show, and I want to introduce you to her. Her name is Martha Johnson, and let me tell you that Martha Johnson is um, a very proud published author, but she is, I think, most proud of the fact that she started writing at the age of 60. So, you know, it's um, nice to know that there is never an age where you can, you know, not learn and not start something. Um, Martha Johnson facilitates workshops and poetry readings, and she provides writing space for memoir writers that are in retirement. So we're going to talk a lot about retirement and transitions today, and we're going to find out exactly how Martha helps people through not only what she does when she talks, but about her books. She is the author of a book called Why Not Do What You Love? Don't we all want to do what we love? <laughs> right now, I'm doing what I'm loving. So I want to... Um, tell you more, but we're going to discover it all through our interview today with Martha Johnson, and I want to welcome her to the show. Hi, Martha. Hi. I'm welcome. so glad to be here. Yes, I'm so glad that you came in, and we we're finally able to, you know, talk and let people hear what we're talking about, because you and I have met several times. Yeah. Um, you know, your book, Why Not Do What You Love, is one of those titles that, you know, just mm -hmm. capture you, because you're like, yeah, why don't I do what I love? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you've written two other books called Musings Along the Way, Volume 1 and Volume 2, which are poetry books. And you, you didn't start writing until you were 60. That's right. So why not do what you love? Did you discover at 60 that you wanted to do that? Or did you want to share why you were doing what you loved? No, the, I, I, I've always known that I want to do what I love. And I've always done what I love. The problem was I was afraid to write down what you love. What I loved, yeah. and so that's a whole another story of of releasing the fears yeah. to actually do things that yeah. I'd never done before. Cause and, because my identity almost still is until very recently is I'm not a writer, I'm not a poet, I'm not an artist because it's just these things flowed out of me, which yeah. was. Very different. Which I a nice not... discovery to find out that even as we say, oh, we're not a writer or having to admit that we are writing, which means mm -hmm. we're a writer, it's something that's within us yes. that we get to discover. But the gift was uh, I got ill. Mm. And so at 60, 59, 60, 61, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I uh, moved then from Washington, D.C. to Massachusetts. I was unable to practice my business that I'd founded and, and management consulting and coaching. Yes, I, I didn't even say and, that in the intro because you've done so much. And I lost my future mm -hmm. because I could no longer play tennis, which is what I love to do. Yeah. But I really lost my identity mm. of who I was because I couldn't do all those things. Mm -hmm. And what happened, the, these feelings just flowed out. And that's why I consider it a gift, because I was kind of blocked up yeah. most of my <laughs> life. I, I, I totally resonate with that. And I think, you know, especially anyone who is in a transition in their life, I mean, we all go through transitions, but when you're going through the transition, you do feel like, 
you know, you're dying in a sense because you're losing your identity. That's right. I mean, That's when right. you know, I was a florist for over three decades. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when the pandemic came and I had to make the very difficult decision to close the business, I really struggled with who am I now? Like, who is That's Angela right. if she's not with flowers in her hand? I mean, I'll still keep flowers by my side. <laughs> um, but, you know, who is Angela who has identified herself as a florist for so long? Right. And, you know, even as you're, you know, my children want to, you know, go off to college and it's like, well, if I'm not making dinner for my children every night, what is my purpose? Am I still a mother? You know, am I still a florist? I'm, and when these transitions happen, it's hard. It's hard to adapt to them. And as a writer, I think it's very, uh, I don't know if it's cathartic and therapeutic to write. Mm -hmm. So, in, and you're right. I mean, I have, I have journals filled mm -hmm. with, you know, thoughts and feelings and, you know, things that I sometimes take to write into, you know, novels. But a lot of them, you know, are my own personal thoughts. And that's what you've done with, you know, musings along the way, especially because this is your journey about your transitions. That's right. And uh, I, I used to cry every day, mm. and I'd sit down in front of the computer, and something yeah. would flow out. And I just would stick them in my, my drawer. And one day I said, well, this is strange. What's going on here? And I sent the first 18 pieces of paper to my friend, who was an editor. And Which is always a little um, anxiety driven, yeah. don't you think? Because you're like, you're sharing these with someone. Yeah, and she wrote back and she said, my editor's pencil never came out in my head. Just keep writing. So, okay, mm -hmm. just keep writing. And da 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 But uh, I had not not intended to write a book mm -hmm. uh, at yeah, all. Yeah, so you gathered all these, I'm going to call them scrap pieces of paper, even though right. I know some of them are very organized. Uh, right. But what made you decide to put them in a, you know, a well, book? Well, again, form? it wasn't my decision. I was thinking about this in relation to your your question before, and I had forgotten. I was going to a therapist at that time because I had, there were so many losses in my life yeah. to deal with. And the therapist said, well, these, these poems are very nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't we make a book? I said, oh, no, I, I'm not a writer. I, I don't know how to make a book. She said, but we're going to have a book. Yeah. So we put, we put them together. And she said, and, and now you're going to design the cover. I said, I don't, I'm not an artist. I don't design the cover. No, and they're beautiful. But, but the, those are pictures, really, yeah. that I took or a friend of mine took. But uh, it, matter of fact, I brought the first, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it, but I brought the very first copy. Oh, look at that. The, I mean, oh. it's so cool to see <laughs> the transition of your first <laughs> right. draft to the final. Right, and uh, in fact, that was my married name, and one of the the, uh, in the th transition, we we divorced, and so that was another piece. But I started laughing because this is the only copy I have, and my I need to just <laughs> touch it for a minute. Oh, <laughs> you know, I mean that's. And but it was actually the the therapist oh, who beautiful. encouraged me because I wasn't a writer, I wasn't a poet, I wasn't an artist. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, so I say that for encouragement. Uh, really to, to your yeah. audience because y you don't have to be something no. you just and I, I you have to be vulnerable my, you have to be vulnerable to share you ha <laughs> but I wrote them for myself yeah I didn't intend to sell them I didn't intend mm -hmm. to share them I wrote them for myself and and now I'm finding out this is 20 years later I am finding out that they have meaning for, for people that's the beauty of, of writing is that I find like, you know, you're writing for yourself to work out your own thoughts and your own exactly. feelings and, and to get that expression out. And then once you've accepted it and started to heal from it, it's like you can go back and read it and realize this could help someone else. And so many times, uh, you know, I'll speak from my own experience, you know, when you do have those losses, like when, you know, whether it's losing a business or a child or a friend or a parent or, you know, just moving any of those transitions that are so hard, like when you write them out and then you are able to learn, 
your own journey and your own path. Exactly. You're like, you know what? This could help somebody else. And I mean, even with an angel's journey, like the whole communication with the afterlife, like, you know, I mean, I've, I've always, you know, believed in it and felt it and seen it and, you know, witnessed it. But like being able to share with someone like mm -hmm. how something like that could happen mm -hmm. is is valuable for you know to someone now your musings along the way i mean your subtitles here tears lies and fresh fruit pies <laughs> and then your second volume is pain persistence and purifying waters mm -hmm. what i find so great is that you know each volume is dated for like the era that you were writing in mm -hmm. so this one's 1997 to 2001 and then you have 2001 to 2008 so you know they're you know five to seven years each when you gathered those papers and you were writing them, did you do you date your papers? Well, that's what date I your regret. Poems? That's what oh. I regret. I did not date them. So it was more a matter of what were the feelings along the way. Clearly, oh. volume one stayed the same, and then volume two came, and then it, it was a question of, well, I lo my marriage wrote more about the breakdown of the marriage, I broke, wrote more about the um, kind of the healing journey, yeah. um, how difficult that was. And so, so I will admit that I do date my things. And, yes. And over the years, I've even learned not just to date them, but I will write where I am when I'm writing it so that I can kind of put myself back I into think that's that a very position. Good idea. Very a lot good of idea. the um, a lot of writers that I work with that I coach or I've done editing or formatting for, you know, I will say them, you know, for your rough drafts, date them, you know, I mean, just because it helps you. But I, my, my pet peeve is sometimes they don't number the pages. Yeah. <laughs> like you need, especially in a novel, you got to number them because if you, you know, drop them on the floor, you know, mm -hmm. or a script, you don't know what order they go in. But when you're talking about writing memoirs and poetry for your life, like you said, you didn't date them. So you don't know what order they go in. But when you read it, you know where you were at that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, I, I mean, I, when I was first married, you know, I got pregnant, I had a miscarriage. And I go back to those journals sometimes and I can see what my, my thoughts were and where I was of like, you know, wishing and dreaming to be a mother and then going, you know, finding out that I'm pregnant and then dealing with the loss. And it's like, it's it's a it's a journey you know and it's very mm. interesting and even now i mean last night i'm gonna admit this here but last night i pulled out an old journal from 2021 and and it was dated and i was engrossed in reading it like you know no editor pen came out either but mm. I, I was just like wow this is where my head was this is where i was then and just to see you know kind of how far i've come or how far i didn't come you know like the changes yeah. that still need to happen it's fascinating because yeah. it's such an awesome tool personally to use, but that's what to it was share with others for is me. such a gift. Um, but the thing is, that I didn't necessarily think that this would be helpful to others. That wasn't what I was doing, but uh, somebody asked me to share, yep. and so I went to a senior center and I shared, and I went to two senior centers and I shared, and, I, and the response was extraordinary. And, and so I was left figuring out why did this journey that happened to me uh, affect, affect those people? And I so I really was learning from that because 20 years ago, I was, you know, 60 and 65, I was writing most of these. And the people I was talking to, to were now in their 70s and I assume the transition to aging was a big deal mm -hmm. for them. And and so I'm 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 doing more talking to audiences about well, what what was it that you, you connected with? Well, and I can with. see why you connect so well with, with the senior, you know, senior citizens at the senior center and in retirement groups because there is that you know, loss of identity. And I don't even want to use loss, it's the creation of yes. your your authentic identity. Yes, you find you out know? who you are. Because you, you could have been, you know, be, be a manager and, um, you know, a people for 50 years and then your job ends and it's like, well, who am I? Exactly. And, you know, working with 
retirees. I know you you run some, well. I'll say you run some classes. I know you hold space um, for them. <laughs> I, I love that you saying. hold space. Yes. But yeah. people need that space and time to yeah. write. So you know you facilitate um, a writing space group in Holyoke, yes. where retirees and you know most people of retired age are you know in the yes. senior citizens. So you know they can come and take that pause and reflect on you know, where they've been, where they are, where they're going. Mm -hmm. I think that's just beautiful. Well, it's a, it's a little bit different in, in the sense that uh, at, when COVID hit, um, you know, we were on lockdown. I, I live yeah. at Providence Place in Holyoke, a senior residence. Yeah, beautiful. And um, I put a sign up. And I said, what are we going to do with this gift of time? Mm. Uh, let's write for our grandchildren. And so I was surprised that only four people signed mm. up. And I thought, what are they going to do? We can't do anything else but write. Right. So anyway, it, it ended up being those four people. And for a year and a half, every single Saturday, and we started with Zoom because we couldn't get together, they would they were so committed to their goal of doing this that i was really just running a support group as mm -hmm. you say creating yeah. space and facilitating and every week they would come in with something they had written and yeah. they would read and, it and some of them have and completed an entire book and, and actually got it published actually, which is awesome yes and you met the gentleman yeah. at your last yeah george ride, callahan george callahan and he actually turned all those stories into a book, which has been published in, on Amazon, Meet mm. Mr. Callahan. Yeah. And so others are doing similar things. Not that everybody has to write a book. That's not I, the point. I love his title, Meet Mr. Callahan. Like, he was almost meeting Mr. Callahan, too, as he was yes, writing it. As he like, was we could all, I could write, you know, Meet Angela. Like, you know, because you want to discover who you are. But he, ha that. he had an amazing life yeah. of all these yeah. well, <laughs> problems and, it's, and success. Every and life's <laughs> journey is unique and different and yeah. worth shouting from the rooftops about, yeah. you know? So yeah. if we can share our journey to entertain or educate, like I say, yeah. or inspire someone, I mean, yeah. that's an important reason to tell a story. Um, you, you, so you just facilitated a class at the recent Why Write conference that yes. I hosted, so thank you. And I took your class, yes. and it, it was called Writing to Heal. And I love, so you read this one poem that just really resonated with me because mm -hmm. I, you know, like I said, going through these transitions and as, you know, a florist for so many years, I have boxes and boxes of, you know, my stuff from my shop and my office. And there was a line in your poem that said, um, you know, like, oh, I have all these boxes of a past life. You know, what am I going to do with this? And I was just like, yeah, that's that's where I am. Like, there, we, we have these boxes that we kind of, I don't want to use the word hoard, but we protect, you know, because they that's mean right. so much to us. But do we need it? Like, and what do we do with it? Yeah. And, you know, it was it was very, um, you know, healing for me to hear your poem. And, and it was it was a great exercise for me to take that line and you know flow with it. Can Do you want to share it? Sure. Yeah, I see you getting pages out. Yeah, definitely it's, read it. It's, it's called Transitions and Stuff. How can the normal, natural next steps of moving on in life be so excruciatingly painful? On the one hand, it is just a box of papers. On the other, it holds the templates for a professional life no longer practiced. On the one hand, it's just a box of shoes. On the other, it's filled with my deepest hopes for being able to walk fashionably again. Mm. They were both ready and waiting for the future I meant to have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just it just speaks to my heart so much and you know the shoe line got me today not just because i you know my maiden name is schumann mm -hmm. <laughs> but i still have the box with my wedding shoes in it like why am i keeping these shoes exactly i'm not gonna wear them again but it is that like sacred like oh these were my wedding shoes you know and it's like why are we hanging mm -hmm. on to 
memories, tangible physical memories when they're already in here, you know? Right. And putting the stories on paper, I mean, it's, it's, it's just so beautiful. And it provides, you know, a breakthrough. <laughs> You yeah. know, I mean, I, I I went home that weekend and I actually threw away some of the boxes. So did you? Yeah, I was like, you know what? Dropped them off at Savers, and I'm gonna start, you know, unloading some exactly, of these things. Because why am I keeping? I this? had high heel, not high heel, but at least medium heeled shoes, and of course, I can't wear those. <laughs> <laughs> I can't barely. Yeah. I, you know, I use a walker now. Uh, so yeah, well, so, so I had been saving those shoes, and some of them were even new yeah. shoes that I had bought. Well, I, and I have a box of all of my old dance shoes. I was a dance teacher for twelve years and a dancer for oh. twenty nine years, and I mean, I have like even my shoes when I was little, like I, you know, because I would loan them to friends or whatever. And I'm like, why am I keeping all these dance shoes? Like. Somebody could use them. I need to unload them. I'm not going back up on a stage to tap dance. I, I tap pages now. I tap right. computers. But it's like you, you you are so, it's so hard to let go of that identity. So um, I, I know you have two other poems that you want to read, which I think are, I mean, I know that they're very important because this can show our audience how when you're writing about something in your life, you can learn from them to know where you were at that time. Um, so do you want to do you want to yeah. share them? Yeah. Um, let's see, I put down the. This is really, and, and you know, it's it's amazing because I don't know when I discovered this. When but, you discovered the poem that you wrote, or wrote uh, the poem yeah. of discovery. I'm sorry. No, um, what do we got here? Battered and broken. Um, the titles page. themselves are just really, really nice because you can, the way she's written these out, um, you know, here they, it is. they will speak to you just the titles and then, you know, she has the whole index in here. So yeah. it's so nice to just yeah. kind of scan through and be like, you know what, today I want to read a poem about self-awareness. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. So this, this was a time that I was really not feeling too well. It's called Battered and Broken. I feel battered and broken, ripped, stripped, and raw. Puddled blood, bone, sinew, lie lonely on the ground. An identity lost, or so it feels. My death-defying remains, hope a spirit lurks nearby, willing to breathe and inspire new life. Wait, I notice something or someone is writing these words, witness to what is and the change is certain to come. Apparently, I am still here. Mm. Yeah. Someone or something is writing these words. <gasps> I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, because you can, know, yeah. And, you know, just reading it now, does it feel like like that's a different person? Um, yeah. I, I don't remember feeling like that. Yeah. I don't remember. It's like writing it almost releases it from yeah. being um, stuck inside us. Because, you know, there's, an, there's another one. Uh, this is just a short. I wasn't planning to leave, read this, but... Um, Yesterday, I burned a pot of lentils. Today, hoping to redeem myself, I set to boil a pot of black beans. I burned them too. <laughs> so those were the, uh, the tough <laughs> days, but I, I want to give you an idea yeah. of what's at the other end end of this yeah i mean you know because uh, now we're la you're laughing about it but that day you're like really oh. i burnt them i'm burnt and burning <laughs> another one like you know it it gets frustrating so okay. yeah let's hear let's hear let's, one more because yeah. then i want to talk to you about yeah the differences of the timing and where you yeah this is called my own needs and it's really the end sort of near the end of volume two sometimes it happens, a breakthrough 
occurs. The clouds part. The haze lifts. My own true needs, those universal forces seeking expression, previously denied, ignored, and stuffed. They hear my call mm. and my coaxing. They rise to the surface, delight to be recognized, named, and welcomed. So painful to apologize to myself and to them for constructing the wall at the mouth of their cave, denying them an honored place in my heart. So joyful to shepherd them to the light of day, shake hands with them in person and say to every single one of them, you are okay, you are me, and you and I are free. Mm. That's beautiful. And you can see where your healing see. comes in there. I mean, this is, exactly. you know, our journey of life. Yes. And going through your poetry, I mean, it's, it's like, when you go back to reread, it's like reviewing your own life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, and, and you do, well, you used to do a lot of um, coaching and mentoring about, you know, life's journey. I mean, you're still doing that, you know, mm -hmm. while you're helping people to write their memoirs because it's giving them, showing them their journey and giving, you know, right now we're doing whole like life reviews. Well, well I'm, I'm 84. And are beautiful and amazing proud, and young. Proud 84. To, to mention that. But. It's not until you reach the late 70s, mm -hmm. for most people, and early 80s. Uh, 80 seems to be a, a key turning point where you have, you can, do, you can do the review of your life and people, uh, more and more people are looking at that because you have the whole life yeah. to review. So the perspectives are different well, I've done I've done life reviews, and I I do you know sort of every at least every decade write myself like a little birthday letter in that oh. life review process oh. of just saying you know this well, is where be I've been to say. this is you know where I'm hoping to go and you know now you know when you get to that point where you're reading that and you're like okay well I was hoping to be here at forty or hoping to be here at fifty then you have to accept kind of the um, I don't want to use the word disappointment, but you know, the disappointment that you're not where you expected to be, but the acceptance of knowing you're where you're supposed to be. Yes. You know? And, and, that, and that's the paradox yeah. of this whole thing. Yeah. Yes. So I, 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 we have to wrap up the show pretty good pretty soon, but I do want to say, like, you know, when you were doing, um, when you were working and, you know, before all this writing, you were helping people still with something called the willingness checklist. And I want you to talk a little bit about the willingness checklist because when I heard about the willingness checklist, I was like, it just sounds like something that we all need to have in our life. You know, the willingness to, to be who we are and do what we do. Yes. Um, and that really is explored um, very in much first, yeah. in Why Not Do What You Love. Of course, they're related because um, when people want something and, and Many people, you know, say, this is what I'd really like. But what's underneath subconsciously is the belief, perhaps, that I'm not good enough, I can't do it, I don't know how, and those are beliefs. Like the goal which, to write a book and you're like, I'm not a writer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote the book anyway, but I'm, I'm still, you know, it's funny. Yeah, it is funny. It is funny because two weeks ago, it came clear, I am a writer. I am a writer. <laughs> and this is after 30 years. I know, we have to accept these things. Like, I am a writer, but, I am a woman. But so, when I was in my 40s, before I got ill, I was really looking into beliefs. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a pioneering thing at that time, um, in the 80s. And if, if, if it's, it's, you know, there's a there's a whole year long course on miracles, mm -hmm. a year of miracles, uh, because people are looking at beliefs much more closely, and so it's not it's not less of a willingness checklist, 
but matter of saying, okay, part of me is unwilling. What is that part called, and what do I need to do to shift that? Right. Um, so yeah, it it helps to discover your passion and like right. what you'll really commit to. Because if you're, you know, thinking I want to write a book, but you're not willing to take the time to sit down to exactly. do it, exactly. you have to explore why aren't you willing why to take that time? And do you not have the passion to do it? Then that's fine. Yes. But do you need more direction? Do you need a mentor or a coach? Do you need a writing class to sit in? You know, there are ways to you know ways get the overcome. willingness yes. <laughs> to work. Yes. So yeah. Um, you know, we could talk. For, I can talk for, for, for hours for you, for, with you. forever. And forever. I think about we had, that. you know, coffee or something because one day, which was like three hours long. <laughs> one of the things that people can say is is making a list mm -hmm. of why might I be unwilling. Yeah. And in a class, I recall mm -hmm. that a woman got to their unwillingness at point twenty six. Ah. It finally came out. Yeah. So I mean, I encourage people to say, why might I be unwilling to yeah. do this? It's not blame. Yeah, no, it's not, no. Uh, it's a, it's a part it's, of the acceptance it's process. It's just part of the It's part of the, I mean, for yeah. me, I think tattoos are beautiful. I love, you know, seeing people with tattoos. I want to know the story behind them. I am unwilling to get a tattoo. And I've made the list of why I'm unwilling to do it. A, because I know I'd regret where I put it. <laughs> B, I may regret what I get and want to change it later and it's kind of permanent. You know, never mind, you know, the whole sitting down and getting the needles. <laughs> you know, and it's like, that's my willingness checklist of, yeah, I think they're beautiful, but I'm not, that's not for me. You know, and you, and you exactly. know what's for you. And exactly. when you're sitting down and trying to discover what you love, you discover what is right for you. Exactly. And that's who you are. And you're Martha Johnson, and yes. um, the, these books are available. Can we tell the audience where they can yes. get information and buy them? Yes, uh, they're available on Amazon and or uh, meetmarthajohnson.com is a, an old website, which I am not changing, <laughs> but at least Original. It, it gives you uh, more about the books and what what I have done and who I, who am I, uh, but certainly Amazon.com is, is right. uh, well, a good place. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. I appreciate it. I know the audience has learned a lot from you, and I look forward to having more conversations with you I, in the future. I would love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you, my audience, for tuning in to another episode. And, you know, for, for those of you who have been watching each episode, you know what's going to happen now. And if you don't, then welcome to this segment where you are going to have a writing prompt. So when the show ends in a few minutes, I want you to set your phone timer, microwave timer, look at the clock, give yourself, you know, 5, 10, 20 minutes, however long you want. And you're going to take my writing prompt and you are just going to let that pen flow onto the page. And today, you know, we've been talking to Martha Johnson about learning to do what you love and express yourself to find out who you are authentically, not what you do but who you are. And I want you to take that time right now to write down what you love and what you'd want to do. So you, you know, kind of making three columns here. One is things that you love. I mean, we can write that on and on and on and on. Things that you want to do. And I'm not talking go to the grocery store, vacuum the floor, things you want to do with your life. <laughs> you know, perhaps you're, you know, newly married and you're thinking you want to have children. Maybe you're in college and you're thinking, you know, what kind of career you're going to be wanting to have. Maybe you're retired and you're thinking about downsizing your house. Write down what you want and then write down what you're willing to do to get those goals. Because in all of that, you're going to add more things to what you love. So thanks for tuning in to Why Write. Thank you to Studio 954 for making this show possible. And we will see you next time. Have a great day.